Hello, this is Rumu from company Ruga Instruments. Today I would like to explain you how to get familiar with the Ruga Duck 4 under Darcy Lab. So, as first, please make sure that you are under fully administration rights um, locked in on the Windows platform. So, as next, um, I assume that you already installed the Daisy Lab program. And as first, we start to look what is the content of the Ruger Duck 4 CD. So we have here this first the USB driver setup. So this must be first done. So this is a driver for the Ruger Duck 4. So now I execute it. So we have to confirm this here. Anyway, I select the language. This driver is made for Ruger Duck 4 from company Goldarm. So we install it. So we went through. So and now the driver setup is done. Now as next I connect via the USB cable the Ruger Duck 4 to one USB port and enable the power. We can check in the device manager In the device manager we can check and scroll down to USB controllers. So and we can see here if we connect the Ruga Duck 4 to the PC and the driver is correctly loaded. We can see here the multi-choice USB basic series device driver is active. So that's fine. Next, I pre-installed here already the Daisy Lab in order to save time for you. So and then as next, I have to execute here the Ruga Duck 4 to Daisy Lab driver. So I will do it right now. Yes. Just went through. Hit next, next, next. So and we are finished. So far, so good. Now I open up Daisy Lab. I use here the 28 days trial version in order to check if this is working also with this one. So and then we will find the Ruga Duck 4 at the input output modules. So here under the folder Ruga Instruments we find here the Ruga Duck 4. So now we take the analog input onto the worksheet. So and then we have here always two channels enabled. So double click. So I have now all four channels enabled. Here under the card info we can see and read out the Ruga Duck 4 serial number and here we have several informations for D. 
debugging and so on. So next, at the channel number one, I have here connected an um, ICP microphone. So I change here the input range to, oh, that's okay, 10 volt. So and then, in order to use the ICP sensor, we have to enable the ICP sensor supply. So we do it here, if we hit here the hardware button. So here we can enable the ICP. No? So here, for example, if we hit gain, so that means we have 20 dB amplification. So that means we have here, here we have 10 volt, 20 dB is factor 10. So that means if we hit here the gain, if this is here checked, means we have one volt plus minus range input. So that's good. So now we have here our four channels. As next, I can choose here the sampling rate. So sampling rate is, I will use now um, 96 kilohertz. So that's for our channels. So next we will see um, the YT chart, so some data. So we go here to the display and take the YT chart onto the worksheet here. Here I enable again all four channels and check at the checkbox the auto scaling. I put it here together. And here we can see the YT chart window. So channel number three, four, five is just open. So that's why we see here just 50 Hertz um, noise. So it's the channel number one. We see already our microphone signal. So as the next, I will stop it. As the next, we like to use our sound level measurement add-on module. So I have to find it. So it's here, sound level meter. So I take it on here onto the worksheet. So this is now the evaluation version. So but for, for this presentation it's fine. So and now I connect the output of the channel number one, the microphone channel, to the sound level measurement module. So now I open up the sound level measurement module and as first what you see here, we have here the typical frequency weightings, slow, fast impulse, LEQ, and we have also here the possibility to use the user-defined uh, time weighting. So ne next frequency weighting. Here we have to change from A to linear input. Sometimes some customers using analog and amplifiers, microphone amplifiers with uh, analog 8 weighting output and if this is the case so then the customer have to indicate this one here. But in case of Rogatak 2, our input is linear. So next, we, I have here a sound calibrator with 94 dB at 1 kHz, means 1 Pascal sound pressure. And I like to execute now here the calibration. 
the sound level meter have uh, the, the um, calibrator have 94 dB. Now I say OK. Now I have to start the measurement. So and now he's waiting for a constant signal. So now I put the microphone into the calibrator. So now the signal is coming. So the calibration is done. Here I can connect of we like to see the signal, of course. I can connect here a digital meter. So just see, let's see. So 93.94 yeah, dB. So now the output of this one is calibrated. Then as next, I like to make. Um, I like to show you how to make a FFT. So in this case, I take this signal. So means I take here the signal analysis. So as first, I take here the data window. I get here the signal from channel from my microphone. Here I adjust the Henning window and the FFT resolution, let's say, is one, uh, 8192 FFT lines. So next I take the FFT. And I take the FFT and then we like to see again by using the YT chart the results. And now I have to change, because we have here a microphone connected, I will change now here the dB reference values. So in this case I enter here 20 micropascal is my 0 dB reference value. What is different for some reason? So now Activate here the auto scaling, and now we have here our signal, our FFT. I will make here a zoom. So I like to see it, let's say, up to 2000 Hz. If I grab now a cursor. So 
over here I can see the values. So this is a way how to make a setup with with the RugaDuck 4 and how to get familiar with the DASI lab on an easy way. Of course, you have here many, many possibilities by using DASI lab. In this case, I recommend to, to, um, to walk through the different example worksheets so that you get more and more ideas how to um, solve in an elegant way your measurement tasks. Thank you very much.